Hey guys, it's Vasamo from Stractors again with a beginner guide to Solana NFTs and Candy Machine V2. With our last video, we picked up a lot of people who were thinking about dropping their collection on Solana and showed all steps that are necessary. But on our Discord server, we have often been asked the same things, so we are making this video to answer to many general questions and explain the most important topics. If this video reaches 100 likes, we will release the ultimate staking guide next week, one of the most requested videos from our community. So leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Let's start the video, here we go. What is Solana, Metaplex and Candy Machine? How do we release NFTs on Solana? How is it different from other blockchains? Okay, first of all, let's explain what Solana is all about. Solana is a very fast, high performing and extremely cost efficient blockchain with almost no gas fees. It is also very eco-friendly as its speed reduces energy consumption. These are the perfect conditions for NFTs, right? But when it comes to launching your own NFT collection, it is a slightly different process than you may already know. Instead of coding your own smart contracts like on Ethereum, we are using Metaplex, which is a collection of tools allowing us to realize NFT projects on Solana without writing one single line of code. Its biggest project is the Candy Machine, a fully on-chain NFT distribution tool, which we have already presented in many videos. Let's get to one of the most asked questions. How much does it cost to launch a collection on Solana? That is actually easy to answer. Your project costs will basically result from two different components. The cost of storing your files somewhere and the cost of the Solana rent, which is to store the Candy Machine configuration on the blockchain. After a Candy Machine is fully minted, you can withdraw your SOL and get a huge amount of the rent back. Let's do a quick calculation. For our Stractors Pixel release, we had a collection size of 100 NFTs, which cost us 0.17 SOL and all our artworks and metadata was together less than 5 MB. So we spent for the Arweave storage costs not even a dollar. So as you can see, it's almost free to put out your own NFT collection on Solana. The calculation links are in the description. A small advice by the way, if you want to mint your own NFTs at the end, for example for giveaways, then mint with your authority wallet. You will receive the paid amount of SOL back and you have only spent about 0.01 SOL gas fees. Let's get to the next question. How do you realize a presale slash whitelist? And what are SPL tokens? All you need to make a presale possible with Candy Machine is to generate SPL tokens and distribute them to your users. SPL tokens are fungible tokens on the Solana blockchain, which you can use in our case as some kind of tickets to enter the show, or in other words, the precondition to mint our NFTs. But there are also a lot of other use cases for SPL tokens. You can for example use them also for limiting mints per wallet or allowing discounted mints. We have already released two videos where we show every step needed to realize SPL token creation and distribution with Gumdrop. Make sure to check out our ultimate guide. You can also find the Python script in our Discord server to distribute them in that way. That's actually a cleaner way and more user friendly but requires a little coding experience. As soon as you're starting with the candy machine steps, these topics will face you. Let's get to the question. What should I do if my upload fails? This is one of the most common error messages that everyone is likely to get and completely normally. You should just rerun the upload until it's done and everything should be fine. Also don't worry if it charged you a high amount of SOL with the first run. Just rerun. If you feel uncomfortable, you can easily get your funds back with the withdraw comment. Also make sure to ever use Arweave as upload method than Arweave Sol. In our experience it costs fewer errors, but only if it fits your image sizes. For the Arweave storage method, the image size has to be between 25KB and 10MB. For Arweave Sol the limit is 100MB. One of the biggest sources of upload errors comes from the fact that people are ignoring custom RPCs. What are custom RPCs and why are they so necessary? Using a custom RPC node can solve a lot of problems that you have on the mainnet caused by the traffic of the Solana network. To use one, you will first need to sign up for an account and create the node by paying the fee. We can recommend QuickNote, but there are other providers you can check out as well, like Genesis Go. 
The cool thing is that using custom RPCs doesn't just help with uploading, it can also be used in the mint process, so your users can have a better minting experience with less transaction failures. But be aware that while using a custom RPC, you will be rate limited depending on the purchased plan. Be sure to purchase a node that has enough weight to handle the transactions of your mint. For example, the $9 quick note plan, which we just showed, can be enough for 1000 mints. The next big question is, which frontend you should use? We are always recommending the responsive UI from our team member Bloodspill, which has a simple and clean design to cover your needs. Of course you can do any kind of frontend adjustments. He will also release an improved version of it with new features soon. But we will announce more information about that in our Discord server, so make sure to join it. And here are some other frontends, you can find the links as usual in the description. An often asked question is also, if it is possible to update already existing NFTs? And the answer is yes, you can update the metadata of your NFTs in case you messed something up or if you just want to realize the reveal functionality. The tool you need is called Metaboss, you can find it under metaboss.rs. And with that extremely helpful tool, you can change the data of one single NFT or all NFTs. How to realize the reveal functionality in detail is too much for this video. Therefore, I am referring again to our ultimate guide. And the final question is, how do I list my collection on marketplaces? To get listed on marketplaces like Magic Eden or Solanart, you have to basically close your mint and fill a form. You can find them also in the description. You just have to answer a few questions about your collection and finally provide your verified creator address and the hash list of your mints. You can find your verified creator address easily on SoulScan and with that you can also get your hash list with plenty of tools like this one on Magic Eden. Besides that, you can get a snapshot of your holders with the hash list output we just got. Simply paste that into another tool like this one right here and it will give you a JSON with the current holders. Once our Stractor's Pixel collection goes sold out, we will also film and documentate the process of getting listed on a marketplace in a video. I hope you liked this little guide slash FAQ. Maybe we can do more videos like this uh, besides our big guides. And yeah, before we release another ultimate guide next week about staking, we would like to see 100 likes on this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for all of your support and yeah, see ya.